Hi guys and welcome to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to start our Zombies game. And um, I have a, found a place to put all the files and you can download those from the description below. It's coming from a Turbo Squid account and everything's provided free. I would recommend signing up to Turbo Squid because it's great for some free models and other assets that you might use in your, might use in your games. So let's get started then. First thing we need to do is bring in our um, first part or first level of the game which is going to be the courtyard. So right click in the project window and go to import new asset and then in the zombie game folder directory you'll see uh, an FBX called courtyard. So go ahead and bring that and this was modelled in Max uh, where all the light mapping was done as well which we'll go into a, into a second. But the most important thing is to check the scale. We'll, we'll leave it as it is, 0 0.01 Turn the mesh compression to high, and under materials generation, we'll change it to per material. This will mean that each material in the scene will result in one material in Unity. And there's no animations in here, so we'll change that to don't import, and then click on apply. And then drag the courtyard from the project window into the hierarchy, and you'll see it appear in the screen. If you double click it, and it'll zoom in. Now at the moment, it's just you, you'll notice there's no lighting in the scene. It's all uh, it's all all the same. There's no shadows, and a process used in games is a process called light mapping, and this is where the lighting is actually baked into the texture or into a texture map. And um, and I have created one of these for you for this scene. And to assign these, if you click on the part of the mesh that you want to assign the light map to, you'll see under the shader section, at the moment it's diffuse. Click on there, go to legacy shaders, light mapped, diffuse, and you'll see a light map slot appear in the in the shader. And then you have to bring in your light map. So if you right click in the project, go to import new asset, and then light maps folder and then courtyard. You'll see it appear there, and this is the uh, the way it's been laid out. So go back to the object you want to apply the light map to, and drag the courtyard light map into the light map slot, and you'll see the shadows appear. And this is much more um, processor friendly when it comes to runtime in the game, because it isn't having to calculate the light. So go ahead and do that for each one. If you click on the wall, legacy shaders, light map, diffuse. Drag the courtyard on into there, click on the fountain, legacy shaders, light map, diffuse, drag in the courtyard. And at the moment this scene is using um the, the scene's default lighting, so you can turn this off by clicking on the sun, and this is what you'll see in game. Do have two lanterns in here which are going to be lit slightly differently. We're going to use Unity's vertex lit shader to do that. Click on the shader to change it to vertex lit. Under emissive colour, change it to white. Or grey actually, white's a bit bright. Just go for grey. There we go. So this is our first level. We've got some blood splatter on the floor. Maybe a zombie over here throwing up or something, I don't know. Alright, so our next step is to bring in our colliders for the scene. Now we could have used Unity to generate these automatically, but it does use the uh, the mesh that's already here in place which isn't high poly but we can do this more effectively using our own colliders which I'll show you now so go ahead and right click in the project window import new asset go back to the root of the um, zombie game folder and bring in courtyard colliders you can see them here in the scene and how, how low poly it is it's just three around the edge one for the floor and then about 8 for the fountain. Again, the scale factor is 0 0.01, mesh compression high, material generation is per material, and click apply, and then drag that into the scene. You'll see them appear here. Now at the moment, they're not going to be acting as colliders. So we need to tell Unity um, that, that they are colliders, and to do this, click on each part, and you'll see in the inspector window it's got a, a section here called mesh renderer if you uncheck that it'll look like it's disappeared go to game you know so go to component 
and physics mesh collider come up with a losing prefab box just click add and then it adds the mesh collider to the object in the inspector there I'm going to do that for the floor as well let's go ahead and click on the floor you'll see it highlight untick mesh renderer it's component physics mesh collider and it really is as easy as that we've just added some very low poly colliders to our scene and we can test these out by bringing in a character which I've done a tutorial for but for those who haven't seen it if you go to the project and right click import package character controller come up with a long list of things we can import for a second we'll just bring everything in click on import has a think about it and starts bringing all the stuff in then a box will appear or a folder will appear in the project window called standard assets if you extend that and you'll see under character controllers first pass controller click and drag that to our hierarchy it will appear out of our um, scene so you can move it into the scene using the arrows or just re reset the position in the inspector to zero, zero, zero. It's now come right up in the middle, so we do need to move it just a bit. You'll know it's in the scene. At the moment, you can see it's going to be halfway through the floor, it'll just fall through our colliders. So, just need to bring it up. It does look a bit small, so make it a little bit bigger. We can click play. Here we are in our game. So everything we've modelled in Max is now part of our first level. So it's been a murder. It's going to be a bit gory. But here will be the house, or the front of the house anyway, which will just be a plane with like a texture applied to it. And then here I thought could be a door, and this is where I'm throwing it open to everyone that's watching the video about what happens next. I thought maybe I uh, would go straight into a kitchen or a spooky hallway and it leads to a kitchen um, where we can pick up like a knife or something uh, sounds a bit gruesome so yeah just leave your idea in the description below and um, we can vote for whichever is our favourite by using the thumbs up and then we'll, I'll get that modelled and then we can add it to our game but for now there's a, a bit of work we can do in the courtyard for example the environment if we go ahead and stop the game zoom out a little bit we're going to change the skybox so if we right click in the project box go to import package skyboxes um, there's a lot to choose from we'll just bring everything in to click on import and we want something that's a little bit spooky so maybe like a night scene let's have a look, let's go to game objects oh no, edit, sorry render settings and skybox material, if you click in the circle bring up a box of all the skyboxes we can use, you can see we've got an eerie skybox it's quite spooky moonshine we'll go for the moonshine actually, that's quite good and I have actually done a bit of research before I started about where the light was coming from, you see you've got the moon up there the shadows are in the right direction so I'm thinking of you. I'm making a good game here. Let's press play. Let's test it out. Yeah, it's a nice setting. I like it. Okay. So that's our first tutorial. We've got our first level in. Um, I hope you have enjoyed what you've seen and hopefully learned something. Uh, let me know how you get on. Again, it'd be good to see any video responses to this video just to see how everyone is uh, finding what I'm doing. Thanks for watching guys, uh, part 2 coming soon.